There's a new vulnerability in town, and this vulnerability can be performed in one or even zero clicks, and it can lead to remote code execution, but it also has its defenses, which we'll talk about. This exploit is called the Felina exploit, also known as CVE 20223190. But first, we're going to talk about this vulnerability and how it works. We're also going to talk about the overall threat picture and who is vulnerable, and also how bad it could get. We'll also talk about how you can defend against this vulnerability, whether you are an end user, not within a blue team or you are in a blue team. Now let's start from the beginning and identify that this vulnerability is novel, but it isn't necessarily new. In fact, this vulnerability was actually caught in the wild and that's how we found out about it. A weird word document was discovered by NowSec originating from an IP address in Belarus. This word document loaded external HTML, which then invoked the MSDT function and executed PowerShell code. MSDT stands for Microsoft Diagnostic diagnostics tool. It's basically a function that allows you to debug or perform troubleshooting utilizing the command line. It appears that this function can be utilized by attackers to run arbitrary code, whether that code is stored locally or it's stored externally. As you can imagine, this set off some alarm bells. And while we're still learning a lot about this exploit, it has been given a CVE identifier, which is CVE 20223190. As you can imagine, this set off some alarm bells. And notably, it set off alarms around cybersecurity researchers, but not within Microsoft Defender, which again, we're going to talk about in a moment. Folks started digging into this exploit, and there are now several write-ups that you can read, and I've linked a few of them down in the video description that were, I thought were very handy for me. If you've worked with MSDT before, you might also be thinking, shouldn't it also prompt for a password whenever you try to invoke MSDT? And you would be correct. However, if you look at some proof of concepts, you would notice that there is a long string of benign characters at the beginning of the exploit. That is because there is actually a buffer of 4,096 bytes that once that buffer is passed, it will no longer work. The, the authentication for MSDT will no longer work and anything behind that will be interpreted as code. In this case, that code could be malicious. So then that begs the question, is this actually just a buffer overflow vulnerability? Comment your thoughts. Now, believe it or not, it is actually here where things get slightly concerning. You might be familiar with previous exploits out there that leverage Microsoft Office or even Word documents to execute a payload. Many of those exploits rely on macros being enabled. A famous example would be Emotet spreading via Microsoft documents and enabled macros, or they would even walk users through enabling macros to be able to detonate the payload. However, again, a good defense for those is you just disable macros. But in this case, it does not rely on macros. So even if you have disabled macros in, in your environment, you are still potentially vulnerable. All the user has to do to detonate this exploit is to simply open the document or worse. As people began to dig into this exploit, they realized that even whenever the user previews a document by hovering their cursor over the attachment, that also exploits the code. That means that this isn't just a one-click remote code execution exploit. This is potentially a zero-click remote code execution exploit. Hey, so while I was editing this video, I found out that even a simple wget request to a remote HTTP server will auto-execute this vulnerability. So it's not just previewing or opening an attachment to run this exploit. It can be a simple wget request, which is not good. And practically speaking, think of all the users out there that likely preview documents before opening them, especially whenever they're in an email. That means that you're still not safe even in the preview pane. You could still be executing malware. That's not good at all. Now, looking at the exploit and the threat picture, it looks like this will primarily spread through phishing emails. That is to say, attackers might be trying to dupe users into clicking or even just, again, previewing malicious attachment by emailing it to them in their inbox and maybe even disguising it to look like a legitimate email. And again, thinking that this is a Microsoft Word document, most organizations out there in the world use Microsoft Word and most organizations probably have MSDT enabled, which means that the threat picture for this exploit is potentially massive and the low level of sophistication for this exploit to be executed yeah that raises a lot of red flags and from a defender's perspective this can be a catastrophic problem especially if you don't really trust your users with phishing emails you don't have msdt disabled you still enable its execution and you don't have the proper detections or protections in place to be able to identify in the retrospect when this has been executed in your environment we're going to talk about that more in a moment now there are already a number of proofs 
proofs of concept out there that you can use to basically analyze this exploit and get a better feel for, or even test within your own home lab. Now, if you're watching this and you're not in cybersecurity and you're thinking to yourself, why in the world would we publicize this exploit and allow people to detonate this exploit on their own? Won't that actually make this more prevalent and allow criminals to commit more crimes? Well, not exactly. First, ethical hackers actually need the, these proofs of concept to be able to audit defenders and make sure that all the fixes that were put in place actually work against this exploit. So really, these proofs of concept help aid defense. Second, it also helps us learn more about attacker behavior. And then finally, the attackers already have this exploit on their hands. It's not like we're leaking some sort of, you know, very sensitive secret and having these out there. It's really more of something for the, de the defenders as a consumer to take and utilize instead of just the attacker having it. Now let's get to some defense. Now, if you're watching this and you're not part of a cybersecurity blue team and you just want to be responsible with your cybersecurity, first off, what's up? Hit that subscribe button. Glad you're here. But the best way that you can protect yourself from this exploit is really by not clicking on potentially malicious attachments or even previewing potentially malicious attachments. In fact, if it's possible for you to go into your settings and disable the preview view, then absolutely do that. Again, remember that this exploit detonates whenever you preview with the document as well. So you don't want to give that opportunity where you may not have meant for the malware to detonate because you recognize that it was a phishing email, but it detonates anyway just because your cursor was in the wrong place. Now, if you also notice a phishing email, there's a number of things we're going to talk about here in a moment, but obviously report that phishing email to the relevant people within your organization. Now, if you are on Blue Team, there's some other things that you can do to protect your organization. First and foremost, I think it's best to really hammer home phishing drills with your user base and trying to educate you users not only on phishing but on this specific exploit and how malware can detonate even whenever it's in preview view and not just whenever they click on it. Second, stay tuned for a patch from Microsoft because they are tracking this and there should be a patch incoming including potential detections for Microsoft Defender. You might have noticed earlier in this video I mentioned that Defender wasn't noticing this vulnerability. That's because this is a zero day and so there are no detections yet and so th that's all coming down the pipe. Just you know make sure that you're staying tuned and prepared to implement those patches as soon as they roll out. Third, if possible, disable MSDT. Now this might break some things, especially if you have some applications or services that rely on MSDT to function, but you have to kind of make yourself a cost benefit analysis on if you leave MSDT out there in the wild, how likely is it that a user will actually click on or preview a potentially malicious document with this exploit. And fourth, make sure that you put the proper detections in place. So even if this exploit gets detonated, you're still able to catch it on the back end. And this is really where behavior starts to come into play, but even in these write-ups, there are some detections that you can implement. But as for behavioral detections, if you notice that there is a remote connection being made from a host to a suspicious IP address, and if you notice that prior to that connection being made, Microsoft Word was launched, that might be something that is of interest. Again, the main thing that we talked about here as far as this malware spreading is phishing. That is absolutely a thing that you're going to want to lock down. But fortunately, I have a resource that you can utilize and share with your team or anybody that you want to warn about phishing right here. So check this video out, share it with anybody that you know you want to teach how to identify phishing emails. And it might also help to share this video with them as well so that way they know that again malware can be detonated in preview. Very important stuff. Of course like this video if it was helpful and drop a comment on what your least favorite food is. With all that I will see you all next time.